MC. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to our next episode. Today we're going to be going over episode 7 of our scuffed beginner friendly tutorial series. And we are going to be focusing on Angle Z. And we did it for our long hair. Excuse the lag. <laughs> See, very scuffed. We did it for our long hair and we also rigged our short hair. So today we're going to be going over parameters, rotation deformers, we're going to be rigging in the neck to our augmented Z parameter. We're going to rig in our hair as well. We're going to touch up our augmented angle X and Y keyforms by linking them to our augmented Z parameter. We'll chuck it all into our physics scene blending settings and we're going to use an augmented physics technique which basically allows us to have more fluid and dynamic movement for our model. And finally, we're going to test our model out in VTube Studio. Okay, let's get started! Setting up parameters. Our last video we focused on angle X and Y physics and rigging. This is what we ended up with. And today we are on to angle Z. So this allows our head to tilt left and right. We're going to be utilizing augmentation again today. So augmented physics. So we're going to be rigging on a separate parameter to what we normally would. So in our physics folder, we've created an org angle Z parameter with the ranges of negative 30 and positive 30. And I explained augmentation in my previous video, but just a rough rundown is that we would normally rig on angle Z here because this is the default parameter in Live 2D Cubism for angle Z. This is what is input into VTube Studio. Uh, but instead of rigging on this parameter, we are just going to rig on a new one. And then in our physics menu, we're going to link that up to the default input. This just allows us to have more control over our physics and the way that our model will look once we have added these parameters as an input and output in our physics menu. Setting up our rotation deformer. So let's begin. So I'm just going to open up my main warps. I'm going to grab all of my head parent deformers. So these. You can see that this is my entire head that we're warping. And now that we've got that selected, we're going to start using rotation deformers. If you've been following my videos, we haven't yet used rotation deformers. But this is a good opportunity to learn how they roughly work. So I'm going to select on the create rotation deformer button here. It's next to our create warp deformer button. And I'm going to call it org. Angle Z, rotation. And make sure it's the parent of the selected object and go OK. And you can hold control and drag it to where you'd like it to be. Some people like their rotation deformer to be above the mouth or at the bottom of their chin. I like to have it just under the mouth because this is where your head is going to be hinging from. And just make sure it's in the center of your face. I think that looks pretty good to me. Okay, and now that we have our rotation deformer created, we can go to org angle Z and create three keyforms. And when we drag it left, we want our head to rotate. So this part is just dependent on your preference, how much you would like. That might be a little bit too much. Uh, maybe like in there. I do like to have a lot of movement here. Like some people like to have it just like a little bit, but I quite like when it all comes together with angle X and Y with the augmentation in the physics menu. And we can always adjust it later on. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with this, maybe even a smidge more. Okay, and now that we've got that done, we can reflect motion horizontally. <laughs> and that looks really cute. So yeah, that was pretty easy. 
that's how rotation deformers work. You want to be careful with rotation deformers and how many you use because they can mess up your model a little bit if you use too many. Rigging in the neck. I'm going to now go and find my neck. So I've got my neck warp deformer selected and I'm going to create another warp deformer on top of that as the parent of the selected object. And we're going to call this neck org angle z create your three parameters and now when we tilt our head you can either use these points up here and drag it up so you want to make it kind of wider at the top let's just grab our pointer tool here and select some points i'm actually going to increase the conversion divisions I'm going to, <laughs> it looks a little bit strange, but I'm going to angle the neck so that it looks like uh, it's not broken. <laughs> so you'll see that the neck kind of moves with the head now and it kind of stretches along here and then it cinches in on this side. And just make sure that it looks okay where the neck joins your body. I also like the top part to be kind of stretched out like this and you can just reflect that over horizontally. Rigging in here tilt for Z angles. Okay so we have now got the basics of our head and neck angle Z done. We now want to warp the hair so that it looks like it's falling with the gravity. So in theory this hair would be falling in the direction that the head is moving. An easy way to do that is just to grab your hair warp deformers. I'm going to create one as the parent of these and call it hair orc angle z. Before you add the keyforms, make sure that warp is in the center of your face. Hold control and just adjust it. I'm going to increase the conversion divisions a little bit. I'm going to do maybe 12 by 12. Increase the Bezier numbers. Uh, maybe decrease actually. We'll put it down to 2. And add your keyforms. So I'm going to grab these hair pieces and create a warp deformer for them. Create your keyforms. And you can just increase those conversion divisions. And then angle the hair pieces to where you would like them to be. Do the same for the other side. And then do the same for all the other hair pieces. linking our Z parameter to our X and Y parameters. Okay, so for this section, we're going into all of our corners on org angle X, Y, and Z. So we just need to add keyforms using our current warp deformer that has already got keyforms on org angle Z. So with the warp deformer that you currently have for org angle Z, you can add some keyforms to org angle X and org angle Y parameters. And this links those parameters to our org angle Z parameter. Make sure that our parameters org angle X, Y, and Z all have green dots 
to make sure that it is keyformed. This will show that those three parameters are now linked and you can go into each keyform on each parameter and touch up the angles. But that's pretty much what I'm doing here. I'm just going into each keyform X, Y and Z and just making it look a bit tidier and make sure that you're using the org angle Z warp deformer for your items. So I just go through and finish this for my long hair and then I toggle on my short hair and I make sure to add those keyforms to the short hair toggle and then I finish off those angles on the short hair as well. just finished rigging in these so I've just tidied up all the corners a little bit it's still not perfect but it basically looks like this and you can just go through each parameter see if it looks okay I also did the short hair toggle. Finishing neck warps for XYZ keyforms. All we need to do now is finish off rigging the neck. So you'll see that the neck kind of looks funky. Uh, we could probably hide the hair now actually, just so we can see it a bit better. So I've got a little bald head showing. What we want to do is just tidy up this neck a little bit. So what you can do now is just finish off tidying up the neck. So on these angles, we can make it look a little bit cleaner. So I like to just drag the top of it Increase the conversion divisions and bezier divisions Smooth all Perfect, so we've just finished the neck. Let's just reveal our hair again. And voila! We have finished off our Z angles. It looks a little bit crazy here, but it will look a lot better when we have it in our physics menu, as well as when we have our actual hair physics done. Setting up angle Z and augmentation in our physics and scene blending settings. So now that we've created our rotation deformer from where our head spins from and we've subsequently rigged in our hair on the parameters and our neck as well as rigging in the keyforms on augmentation angle X and Y parameters let's go into our physics menu settings. So if you watched my previous video on X and Y angles you would have seen that we discussed augmentation and how that all works so pretty much we're just going to add a new folder and we're going to call it augmented z angle physics and then go ok under inputs let's input angle z which is the default angle z parameter in live 2d cubism make effectivity 100 make sure that it's angle Let's create a pendulum and for the normalization of input let's set the minimum angle to negative 35 and let's set the maximum to positive 35 just so we can get that full range and set position x to 25 and the minimum to negative 25. 
keep the center at zero and we'll be able to play with these settings okay i'm going to leave it at that until i see what it looks like make sure you go to output settings add scroll down and our output parameter is going to be our augmented angle z which we just rigged turn the scale up to about 40 i think and now that we've got that let's make sure we go to preview go to settings for cursor tracking angle z uh let's just set it let's just set it to a mouse button that you'd like to use to test select mouse button and then go okay and let's test it So that is what our angle Z looks like. <laughs> it looks so bouncy, look at it. Okay, we could probably turn the scale down a little bit. Let's try 35. I'm gonna reduce the shaking to about 0.8. Oh, it's so cute! I love it! Okay. I'm gonna try right mouse button actually. With X. So this is what it looks like normally when you're not looking left and right. And we could also try the hair toggle that we did. So the short hair. This is what the short hair looks like. Now it's up to you, but I quite like having that bounce. So it's almost like it's rubber banding. And uh, yeah, I think it gives it more movement, more life. And that looks cute too. You can see um, what it looks like all put together. <laughs> I think it looks cute. It looks crazy, but cute. <laughs> curious about how it will look in VTube Studio, so I might do a little test of that as well. A quick VTube Studio test. Okay, so we have our model in VTube Studio. I just finished remaking the textured atlas and exporting my file back into VTube Studio's assets. And yeah, this is it. This is what it looks like. So there are some things that I need to change, like I might increase the augmentation a bit, like the physics, maybe add a little bit more bounce, but I think it looks pretty good. There's some face clipping I need to adjust as well, like this, where is it, this angle right here, on the cheek. But yeah, I'll just keep refining those little things, um, yeah. I think it's good to actually chuck it in VTube Studio during your rigging process, just to make sure that everything's working, and also to see little errors, just in case. This is my short hair, hotkey. <laughs> okay, so that is our Z video complete. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Or if you have any tips and tricks, any advice, I'd love to hear it. Wee! <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Okay, <laughs> it looks a little bit crazy, but I love it. Our next video will be on hair physics. Make sure to check that one out. I wanted to keep today's video a little bit shorter since our previous video was so long. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys could follow along. 
make sure that you grab some food and water and take care of yourself and have a lovely rest of your day or night. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!